The Samsung Galaxy A55, a device that is perceived as a benchmark in the mid-range category. A device that for years now has dominated and has always been the best seller in the segment. And now for 2024, Samsung has updated it, improved it in a lot of areas, but there are some questions. How much better is the new A55 compared to the A54 from last year? And in general, how does it compete with some other mid-range devices in this price segment, especially when you factor in the camera, features and user experience? Let's find out. About the design and build quality, Samsung is still sticking to the one design language across the board so that whenever you see a Galaxy device, it will be mistaken for something else. Now, I'll say that after testing and reviewing most of the mid-range smartphones released this year so far, this is the one with the most premium construction, the one with the most premium look and feel. The A55 just feels right. It feels very solid and well made. This time, Samsung ditched the plastic frame on the previous device in favor of a metallic frame and it is one of the things that has given this device an edge over any other device in its price category. It has a glass bag that is protected by a Gorilla Glass Victus. In fact, both the front and the back glass is protected with a Gorilla Glass Victus. Speaking about protection, the A55 support IP67 water and dust resistance, meaning you can submerge this device inside water for up to 30 minutes. One of the downsides to the A55 is that it is not the most comfortable device to hold. The brush metallic frame is slightly bigger and the whole device is wider. It is not just the most comfortable phone to hold and I don't like the slightly thicker bezel that surrounds the display. For the external features, on the right side of the device, we have the power button and the volume rocker keys. At the bottom, we have a cutout for the speaker a dual microphone and a USB Type-C charging port. On top of the device, we have another microphone and a SIM card slot that has a hybrid setup, meaning it can only take a nano SIM with a micro SD card or dual nano SIM without an SD card. Then when you turn to the rear of this device, we have a triple camera setup that comprises a 50 megapixels main sensor, a 12 megapixels auto wide camera and a 5 megapixels macro lens. And we also have an LED flashlight. For the display, the Samsung Galaxy A55 comes with a 6.6 inches 1080p Super AMOLED with 120Hz high refresh rate. That is slightly bigger than what was on the previous device. It supports HDR10+, plus, up to 1000 nits of peak brightness and 390 pixels per inch density. The display uses a punch hole style that houses a 32 megapixel selfie camera. The display on the A55 is very impressive, offering vivid colors and high contrast. It doesn't level up with the flagship series, but it will most likely not bother anyone that will consider this device. I really love how sharp the display is, colors are nice, everything appears decent and contrasting. Using it outdoor isn't an issue at all. You can clearly see in harsh lighting condition. Watching YouTube videos, TikTok and general media consumption on this device is super amazing. Apart from the slightly thick bezel that surrounds the display, there is nothing to actually complain about here. Another area that seems impressive is the under display fingerprint scanner. And while it is fast and responsive all the time, the unlocking animation makes it looks like it is not snappy. This is something you have to experience yourself to get a feel of what I'm talking about. The speakers on the A55 are impressive. They sound super amazing with impressive bass level and mix. Since it is a stereo system, it has a balanced sounding effect. With Dolby Atmos sound, it makes gaming and watching videos fun on this device. Now let's talk specs and performance. The Samsung Galaxy A55 comes with 8GB of RAM and 128GB or 256GB of storage. Samsung's own Exynos 1480 400mm processor paired with AMD Eclipse 530 GPU. This GPU handles all the graphics activity and it is quite efficient. The new 400mm processor has got some punch. It is very fast and responsive. The A55 is capable of handling anything that you throw at it. Scrolling is fast, opening up is fine, multitasking and the overall performance is impressive. On the Geekbench result, we have a respective single core score of 1150 and a multi core score of 3400. This actually goes to show the performance level and the marginal improvement between this device right here and its predecessor. Then on Antutu, we have a score of 738,917. Again, this is very impressive for a mid-range device. I've actually seen devices in this category with a higher score than this, but I feel like anything above 600,000 on Antutu is already good. 
So for the A55 to score above 700,000, it means it is awesome. The 120 hertz high refresh rate on here makes scrolling super fast and responsive. I played Call of Duty Warzone on 60 frame rate and mid graphic settings, and the gameplay was good. I'll say performance on the A55 is very impressive, and I've never experienced any performance drop so far. However, what I noticed was that the device became too warm and slightly unbearable after gaming for up to 30 minutes. Maybe Samsung still need to optimize this device a little bit more so it can handle most games efficiently because I didn't enjoy the gameplay due to overheating. Now when it comes to connectivity, the A55 is 5G enabled smartphone that ensures smooth download of large files and smooth online streaming. Additionally, there is an option for eSIM meaning you can use this device without a physical SIM card. Now moving on to software, the A55 is running on Android 14 with One UI Core 6.1. If you're familiar with Samsung One UI, you'll come to appreciate it more than any other Android skin out there. Maybe stock Android is slightly better, but One UI has grown with a high level of consistency with a rock solid stability packed with features and optimization. It is fluid with smooth animation, it feels very fast and responsive. It is clean with minimal Bluetooth and apps. It just makes the experience feel slightly better than anything else. The experience here feels similar to the more expensive offering like the S23 and S24 series. And unlike the flagship version, you're getting 4 years of Android software updates and 5 years of security update. That is impressive and Samsung is the only brand that stretches this far when it comes to updating their mid-range smartphone. As usual, Samsung knocks security at an extra layer of protection, ensuring device safety at all times. There is also Samsung K Plus that covers accidents during regular use such as drop damage, spills or screen. Now let's talk about the improved 50 megapixels camera on the back of this device. And just like its predecessor, which I actually think this one right here is using the same sensor, this new device continues to impress with its awesome camera capabilities. The main camera produces decent daytime photos with plenty of details and sharpness, decent dynamic range, punchy colors and accurate exposure. The photos look pleasing to the naked eyes. Samsung has toned down a bit when it comes to saturation. The A55 offers a more realistic approach to colors. They now look natural and lovely. You get a well-balanced image and I was also impressed with the portrait images especially when it comes to details and edge detection. The background blur was spot on leaving the subject properly exposed. In low light, the A55 did pretty well even though some of the images looked soft. The ultra wide images look good too but it lacks details and most times the images appear soft. For selfies, the 32 megapixel selfie camera shows Samsung's strength yet again. The images look sharp and detailed. The dynamic range was spot on as well, and the overall image quality looks great. Kindly go through the images and tell me what you think about it in the comment section below. When it comes to video, the A55 is able to capture up to 4K 30 frames per second, but with no video stabilization. So if you want your footage stabilized, you have to step down to 1080p. 4K 30 frames is a sweet spot for me, so I recorded this entire footage in 4K and the footage looks pretty decent and sharp. Alright, so this is the front facing camera of the Samsung Galaxy A55. I'm currently shooting in 4K 30 frames per second. And from what I'm seeing here, yeah, this looks clean, looks decent, looks very okay. I really like the skin tone right here. And the dynamic range is spot on as well, as you can see here. I like how it's handling exposure as well, but what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. Now let's talk about battery life. The A55 comes to the 5000mAh battery and it is rock solid. It can comfortably last the entire day on a single charge which should be more than enough for most people. With my heavy usage, I always end up with at least 20% of battery life at the end of the day. If you ask me, I'll say that is impressive. I'm sure by now you're already familiar with the fact that Samsung doesn't bundle accessories with any of its smartphones, so you have to buy a charger separately as this doesn't come with one. Now before we wrap things up, let's talk about the price. As at the time of making this video, the Samsung Galaxy A55 goes for 589000 Naira or $450 for the 8GB RAM and 128 gb storage version which is exactly what I have here. At that price, you're not just paying for the premium build quality and a decent performance, you're also paying for the overall smooth Samsung experience. I mean, Samsung is the only brand that offers 4 years of Android software update on a mid-range device right now. Now, if you compare this to what the competition is offering currently, the A55 still stands its own ground even though I have seen devices in this price category that actually outperform this device, most especially in performance and camera capabilities. And if you own the A54 from last year, there's absolutely no need for you to think about this device because there is really no much difference. So that is it guys, my in-depth review of the Samsung Galaxy A55. 
What do you guys think? Kindly share your own thoughts with me in the comment section. If you enjoyed watching this video, kindly drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And I guess I'll talk to you in the very next one.